Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. So this tutorial is all about building a custom template filter. So if you're new to Django or you don't know what custom template filters are, you've never used them before and you're using the Django template system, well the Django template language as it says here comes with a variety of built-in tags and filters and this helps us address the presentation logic needs of your application. So it just helps us um, create some additional functionality within our template or um, add some additional functionality to maybe to our data that we're outputting to the page, for example. So more specifically, we're going to build a custom template filter to add CSS classes to inject CSS classes into form inputs. So let me just explain. Here we have a typical form file, a Django form pi file. And you can see here we're setting up a form from this uh, from this model the address model we define the fields and then we find that we want to do a bit of styling on all these fields here so we go ahead and just extend here and then update the field here for example um, with classes so here we're defining the classes uh, for the full name for this input field okay so this is just one of many ways you can do this and of course we could create a loop potentially here to to do this but you can see that there's a lot of a lot of code reuse or duplication sorry here in the code so that code produces something that looks like this and we have a nicely lined and styled uh, form on our page so let's just go ahead and break this i'm just going to remove the the classes here from this form and i'll just go back here and refresh and you can see that now this input form is now not styled. So we're going to create a, a custom filter, which is going to basically style this or give us the opportunity to style our inputs. And the whole point here is that it just prevents us from having to style it within here. So I just reiterate, of course, there's many other ways we can do this. This is just an example in some respects of just introducing you to the idea of custom template tags if you haven't started utilizing them in the Django templates. So let's start by identifying which package we want to place the folder and the filter within. So here we're going to be doing this in the accounts app here. Um, so I've created a new folder here called template tags um, with an S. So inside of here, we're going to place our filters or start to define our filters. So we just need to create a new file. I'm going to call this uh, add classes dot uh, so the guidelines here, if you look at the uh, guideline or documentation, it also suggests that you should use a, an init file here to ensure that the directory is treated as a Python package. Now, that might not be strictly correct as of Python 3.3. Um, so you don't necessarily have to include that to, to achieve or get this working. So let's go back and let's start coding. So like I said before, what we're going to do now is you can see here from the example, um, that we want to style these inputs and we want to create a, a custom filter so we want to perform for example this type of action we want to be able to go to our address here and you can see here that um, we want to create a, a filter here whereby we can add some attributes some CSS attributes and then it's basically going to add these two CSS classes into this form input here so the end result will be that these this isn't the actual classes we're going to use, but these classes here, these class names will be injected into the form input attribute area and then be added as classes. So therefore we're using Bootstrap uh, 5 here. So it will then be formatted like you see the other PIM inputs are. So let's just get these ready. So in the form here, you can see that the classes should be form control uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, form control, um, margin bottom two, and for some reason, account form. So those are the classes we want to include. So let's just go back into here. So for example, that's the classes we want to add. So this is what we're going to be able to do is uh, to add classes um, via our filter here to this input form. So let's get this working. So we're inside of our template tags, add classes.py. Uh, let's get started. We're going to type this all out. So from Django, uh, we're going to import oh God, import uh, template. That's the first thing we do. 
Um, so that's going to allow us to start registering um, our filter. So template system, subsystem, and then we then need to um, set out the fact that we want to kind of register this. So register equals uh, template dot library. Okay, there we go. So a library, a class for registering template tags and filters. So this is being shown because I'm utilizing. If um, you aren't using the extensions, the I've got the Python extension, and also the apologies, I pretty much tell you every time, and the Django extension here in uh, Visual Studio Code. So it's giving me a little bit of information. You can read that for yourself. There we go. Uh, so that's what we're doing here. And now we're going to um, we're going to be registering a new filter. So we're going to use at register um, dot filter. And then we're going to give it a name. So let's give this a name. So you already saw um, in the address here that I've added this filter here, um, add attributes. So that's what we're going to call it. Maybe I should call it add classes. That's probably a little bit more effective, right? So let's go ahead and call this um, add classes. Okay, so that's how we're going to call this. And now we're just going to make a function. So um, let's call this uh, add classes. Um, and then we take in two things here. So we take in the value and then also um, any arguments. So just to confirm what that is here. So the value argument. So let's just go back here. And this is why I've written it because this essentially is um, going to be or can be the the value so but more importantly uh, I suppose thinking more uh, specifically here the value here is actually going to be in this case the input so what we're going to return in that value is the actual input uh, and we'll print this out in a minute so you can see this so if you imagine what's happening here Django has taken the form and created an input field so that input field is uh, HTML so what we're going to do here, well, what's happening here in the value is we're capturing that input um, string, that input field, the, the HTML for that input field. And then the argument here, apologies, I, uh, the argument here is um, these are the arguments here. So this is what we're passing into the arguments, our, our CSS or our classes, our class names. So let's take a look at what's actually happening here and what's been captured. So we can do a print and then the value. So we're going to print the value um, that gets returned. So now because we've created a new class, I'm going to just uh, rename this to example for now um, because there's a lot of add classes going on here uh, to avoid any confusion. So I'm just going to call this example. Now because we've created this new filter, we can just close and we just need to restart the server. Um, before we can get it to work and let's go back into now and apply this onto our template so on our template at the top here we just need to load in our example so this is the example here now if you were to make a mistake here and um, what you can do is refresh and it will show you all of the different options that you have available that you can load in which is fairly interesting and um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what is available uh, so Let's just go back. Um, oh, actually, let's have a look to see if we can find. You can see we've got example here. That's what we've just created. So you can see that is available. So we need to load example in. And then let's go back to our code down here. So it's add classes. So we'll do that. And let's just refresh. So let's go into our terminal because we just wanted to see what is returned. And you can see this is what's being returned in the value. And like I said earlier, what's being returned is the HTML code for that input field, for this input field. Uh, you can't, it's not shown here. So that, that's what's being um, presented, the, the name input field. So now we know what's being returned in value, a string. We can now capture the class information if there's any existing classes that have been defined. So let's go and do that. Um, so I'm just going to paste this in. To save a little bit of time so you can see here a value.field.widget.attributes.get 
Now, this is a very kind of similar setup if you're used to forms and adding extra additional parameters uh, to forms. You can see here we're using widgets attributes update in this case. So here it just allows me to get the value and go into the, the field data, the widget data, the attributes, and then to get any of the class data. So I, what I've done is I've gone back into my forms. I've added some classes here back into the item so that we can then see what's happening. So what I can now do is print out uh, the classes. So if I were to just refresh my page, let's just go back and have a look. You can now see that it's returning all the classes down here um, that's currently in that input string or in that input. Obviously, it's collecting the string and then it's extracting all the classes. So what I need to do now is there's two situations here. The input might already have classes. So I just say if classes. So if that returns true, if there is data that's returned here um, when we try and access any classes in the input field, then we want to do something. And what we want to do is we want to take that existing, those existing class names and and we want to um, make a list. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to kind of append this. We want to add items to this, and that's the items or the extra classes that we define in our filter. So we go ahead and do that, else we're just going to set up our classes ready to add new information to it. So classes um, equals, there we go. So now we've done that, now we're ready to potentially um, grab any new classes um, that we've entered. So remember any classes will go into the arguments here. So just go back here in our um, in our HTML. So you can see here that um, these are the attributes that we're passing in. So we want to capture them now and append the existing classes if they exist. So let's go back into our example. So let's uh, set this up. So um, we're going to say new classes um, equals, we're going to grab the, the new classes that are passed in the arguments and we're going to split them. So we're going to make a list. And the idea here is that we've got now two lists. So all we need to do is put them together, join them together. And there we go. We've just appended um, or we just added the new classes to the old classes if they exist. So we're going to say for C in new um, classes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get all the classes that we've returned. So remember, we've added multiple classes here. We've uh, grabbed them and we split them to make them into a nice little list. Now we're going to iterate over this list. We're going to loop over this list. Remember our list is here. We're going to iterate over this list. And for every item that we find in this list, we're going to add it to um, our existing list or our new list that we've created. So let's go ahead and do that. So for C in new list, so for every item we find that we've added here, um, we're going to iterate over that. We're going to loop through that each time we're going to output it or make it available through C. So if C um, not in classes, so we want to check whether it exists or not because we don't want to put duplicate classes. So first of all, remember all of our classes are existing classes. If they exist or here in class is variable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to loop through and if the new classes that we've added exist, then we're basically not going to add them. So we're saying for all the ones that aren't in the existing classes, we're going to append. So we're going to append the classes, add um, this, the new classes to the list. Um, let's see. OK, so C refers to the exist the item that we're currently looping through. So here we've got three items here, uh, three new classes. So we're going to loop through each one. So we're going to loop and go through each one. So the first one's called form control. So that goes into C. If C is not in classes, so if it's not already inside of our existing classes that we found, um, then it's not going to be included, obviously. But if it if it isn't, sorry, included already, then we're basically going to append um, the the classes here. We're going to append it. Um, so we're going to add it to it. And 
there we go we just loop through each one if it doesn't exist we're going to append add it to the list and now we have a list of all the classes so now we just need to return we just need to return that so value dot um, as, uh, add as a widget and then we want to add the um, new attributes to it so um, I'm going to say class um, and then we need to kind of join this up so we're going to make a space um, and then we join so this is classes so remember what we've done we've appended the classes so we've collected any classes that exist or not and now what we've done is we have appended with the new classes so what we have now is classes the classes variable holds all the classes so what we do here is um well uh, we join join all that together um with uh class uh, so that's essentially now going to output uh, all of the, the new classes in the class area. Right, so that should be it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Apologies if um, I've said something maybe incorrect. Uh, so let's go back and give this a go. So what we're going to do first is just go back into the code, actually into the forms. We're going to remove the CSS that's in the form or uh, being injected into the form added sorry to the form and then we're going to now utilize our our new filter here so add classes so that's the name of the the filter that we've created add classes and obviously the arguments that we're sending across is going to be form control mb2 and account so let's just add something random so we can see it happening so let's uh, refresh the page and there we go so we're right clicking inspect Let's see if we can actually find them. And you can see here, um, this line here, they've been added, account form and ASD, blah, blah, blah. So the classes are now being included. Right, so there we go. That's um, a simple filter. Hopefully that maybe has inspired you to think, well, you could do a lot more things here potentially. There's a lot of formatting. Um, maybe you want to check the string. Um, there's lots of things that you can include here to create your own uh, template filters and tags, etc. Um, so it's pretty useful. Um, it can help solve certain problems. And the reason I've shown you this is because I'm going to use it on the next tutorial just to solve a small problem. So where this might be a little bit more useful and easy to understand here, here, for example, you can see that I'm collecting the fields in a form and I'm just basically outputting all the field labels. So I might have like 10 or 12 different fields here. I'm just going to loop through each one of those and I'm going to output the label and you can see the field label and then I'm just going to output the field. So this is where potentially my custom filter comes into play because I might have say 12 or 16 different fields here, for example. So I can go ahead and add add my filter here. Oh. So um, it was called add address classes. And I'm just gonna add in the same parameters here. So add classes. So I need to remember to load this in. So it's not called that, it's called example. So I, I load my filters in and then now utilize my new filter here uh, and you can see I'm going to add in these new classes so every time a new field is found here when this loops through all the fields it's going to add those classes and I guess that's a better example of where potentially you might want to use this if you quickly want to add some classes to a field without you having to go through this kind of um, process because these fields here might be generated by another application um, that maybe isn't easy to override um, or to make these changes so there we go. That's how to uh, build a custom template filter. Like I said, maybe that's inspired you to think about other filters that potentially you can build for your templates. As for normal, thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.